Robbie Crusoe across from my table. <laughs> you like a table? Yeah, but the law that needs the Right? <laughs> needs more law. <laughs> FalconArrow.podbean.com, Facebook.com slash FalconArrowCast, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, where we just uploaded our uh, WWE Weekly Review, and we had a lot to say about a lot of stupid things, if you would like to check that out, but... I'm pretty sure we always have a lot to say about a lot of stupid things. No, a lot of <laughs> stupid things happen, but it's J and C, once again, back. Not reviewing Japanese stuff. Should it be J and No, because... Joey and Anthony sounds awful. Like, that's gay as fuck. <laughs> but I, Joey and Caruso. Yeah. Caruso's the uh, very nice TV name. You know what's weird? I've never, like, in my life, ever addressed someone by their last name or, like, known anyone to address someone by their last name. But the last two jobs I have, people have been addressing me by my last name, and it's fucking weird. Because Anthony is extremely common, and Caruso is just Caruso. I yeah. mean, like, it's... It's a legit last name. I, yeah, I guess there are four other It's way more marketable shift, but... than, hi, I'm Anthony. No, that's, you know, everyone's got Anthony. If you had something like Antonio or Antonino, maybe, but you don't even like those names, so. Well, that I don't like him. Antonio is not my name, and Antonino, I, it, it, it's my real name. Fucking but I Tyson never... calls you Antonio literally every single time we meet up with him. But, yeah, uh, and you, you don't say a single word to him. You well, are a hypocrite. I didn't say that I didn't like it. How am I a hypocrite? Anyways, we're back to review some Pro Wrestling Gorilla, and the show we just finished watching was Nice Boys, Don't Play Rock and Roll, filmed on March 18th, 2017, shipped probably like in weeks, April, like a week ago. last week, last, last week. week, and we watched it here in May, on May 11th, and we have uh, maybe one more DVD to look forward to, and then one, another show after coming up, I suppose, I don't know when that's going to happen, but... Yeah. This show, oh, before we even get into the show, I would like to inform you something. So Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella just popped out their kid. Yes, Birdie. Birdie. Birdie, Birdie Joe, is it what it was? Birdie. The, what's the middle name? I don't fucking yeah. know. I don't even care anymore. This kid's name is Birdie. That's, I'm uh, over it. It's uh, her, and, her and Nikki's uh, fucking whatever brand they're doing. It's called Birdie B. That's, I, I don't know what came from. Birdie. First. Yeah. Birdie. This fucker named this kid Birdie. I am in. I am insanely mad right That's now. That's not the worst celebrity kid name ever. What is? I don't know. But oh, I'm... Pilot Inspector was pretty yeah. fucking terrible. I don't even remember who the fuck that yeah, had remember. that yeah. stupid ass name, but yeah. Once again, Daniel Bryan and his wife joining the ranks of very dumb uh, child names, I suppose. Well, PWG, nice boys don't play rock and roll. First match on this card was Brian Cage versus Sammy Callahan versus Keith Lee. And usually, the first match on the card, you'd want to go first, get it out of the way. And maybe the semi-main is the best. This was the best match on the card. Yeah. And, and we hadn't even seen the rest of the matches yeah. yet. Basically, uh, Sammy tried to cut a promo in the beginning. And the mic doesn't work. So the mic got fucked up. He eventually tries to talk and just says, screw it, throws the mic. And goes to kick Mr. Keith Lee in the face. Now... If you don't know who Keith Lee is, let me describe this man to you. This behemoth of a human being. This fellow is quite large. A very large black man with a very large gut. But he can work and he can move and he can flip. I feel like that's like the story of every large guy on PWG. They can all, they're all super athletic. Willie Mack was a large fat guy who was also black. Jeff Cobb's not black. He's Hawaiian. He's still a large guy. He's still tanned. Well, I wasn't saying large black guys is the story. This is the story of any large guy in PWG. Well, here, basically, uh, like like the WWE reviews, like the New Japan reviews, I tend to take notes and write down what everybody does. This is also Pro Wrestling Gorilla. I don't even have to write things down because I don't know what's going on. Yeah, half shit the moves time. too fast in the show. Everything is going on yeah. so quickly, so I have no barely any notes for this matchup. But what I can say is that Brian Cage flipped. Keith Lee did flips. <laughs> Sammy tried to do flips. Um, there was a Canadian Destroyer, I believe, yeah, on Mr. Sammy Keith hit, Lee. Sammy hit Keith Lee with a Canadian Sammy Destroyer. Sammy actually hit a Canadian Destroyer on a fucking 300-pound black man, and he did it very well, and Keith actually rolled over into it very, very well. Yeah. The, the work on this in this match was phenomenal. I mean, Brian, here's the thing. Brian Cage messed up here and there, but we've been see Brian Cage messes up a lot. And, and that's not saying he's a terrible worker. It's just, I feel like he's a large man. He tries to do shit. 
He tries to do flippy shit. Yeah. And like they don't almost, pan out very well yeah, sometimes he almost, for him. He almost killed fucking uh, Sammy Callahan trying to do the, that Weapon X there. The Weapon... Oh, the, well, the, Sammy was wearing a suit vest. Yeah. Okay? Like, he was going to his prom, and it got, it got caught up in Mr. Cage's face. Yeah. And Mr. Cage could not really do too much about it. So, uh, the Weapon X... Eventually he pulled it off. He was he was he was powerful enough to continue the move and finish it off. But um long story short, match was awesome. Yeah. Everyone got their shit in. Keith Lee looked phenomenal. Brian Cage is still Brian Cage. You want to see massive dudes do flippy shit? This is no, the match for and you. another spot. Uh Brian Cage actually well, there's a spot where Brian Cage lifts uh does a suplex from the apron. I don't even know if that has a name or not. Oh, like the 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 deadlift when he's when yeah he's from the, the apron yeah he's on the second turnbuckle he deadlifts you from the from the apron yeah try to perform this on Mr. Keith Lee yeah and Sammy notices and goes oh, shit this guy looks like he needs help so he goes <laughs> over there and gives him the assisted deadlift yeah. suplex into the ring so they both suplex Mr. Keith Lee to the ring but wonderful match and lo and behold this match ended with a falcon arrow yes Brian Cage did the deal <laughs> Excalibur says nobody. Kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. And by golly, was he right? No, nobody kicked out of it. <laughs> and nobody's been kicking out of the Falcon Arrow as of lately. Nope. I don't know, but I think we're getting this yeah. move over. Yeah, we are totally putting this move over. This move's it's, going on the map, folks. It's, it's not like Seth Rollins has been doing it for no. months, or it's been like a staple of PWG commentary. Who the fuck's Michael the, Elgin? Yeah, yeah. Who or cares? Michael Elgin, yeah. Who cares? Uh, yours truly here at the desk shaped like a table. Well, the table shaped like a table. Uh, and the basement shaped like a studio is putting over the move very well. It's it's winning matches these days. Dave and Jake Christ. Christ. By the way, you said it backwards. You mean the studio shaped like a basement. Who cares? Versus the You're chosen. this joke, dude. Versus the, the PWG review. It's a <laughs> one big botch. Versus the chosen bros. Uh, Dave and Two uh, guys that should already be in the WWE. The chosen bros? Yeah. Uh, elaborate. I mean... Jeff Cobb is like a like the monster the monster heel they dream of. He's better than Braun because he's actually at, he's more athletic. Yeah, yeah, but Jeff is also a tight is a lot smaller. He's shorter, but he's he's shorter. Which, he's st- he's still a big guy. Vince has a massive erection for large men. Jeff's a big guy in other ways. He's not a tall man. What do you mean in other ways? Oh, uh, he's got a large penis. Is what uh, I was getting at. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Matt Riddle is just Matt Riddle, but he can't pass a wellness policy test yeah, to save not. his life. So that's probably Matt, why they're fucking awesome, dude. They should be. They should be. They are awesome, and they've only been in PWG yeah. for a couple months now. Let's give them some more time on the indie circuit, huh? Huh, huh Mister Caruso? They've uh, they've they've done enough. They're they're already big stars. What a scumbag you are! Stop taking. Stars. Let's not dry up the indie <laughs> scene here, buddy. They already sucked up all the talent. Yeah. The Chosen Bros pretty much tossed around uh, the Christ Brothers. For the beginning, or most part of this beginning of the match, you mean Ed Sheeran and Co. <laughs> Ed Sheeran, the crowd chanted for Ed Sheeran during this match, and he got a lot. He got a good reception here in Reseda. The Chris brothers get Riddle in the corner, and it's all them afterwards. They beat the fuck out of him, beat the fuck out of uh, Mr. Cobb. Jake and Dave bump the Chosen Bros on the outside. Jake and Dave beat up on Riddle for a bit after they bump, pull off a super superplex power bomb, which is something that they've been known to do. Cobb headbutts the living fuck out of Dave. Everyone is out in the ring. So everyone's laid out. They beat the fuck out of each other. Dave pulls off a springboard ace crusher on Jeff Cobb, which I've seen him do twice so far, and it looks fucking amazing. The Chosen Bros pull off a disgusting, and I do mean disgusting, assisted bro to sleep. Yeah. This shit looked fucking, was it? Uh, deadly. Which which which, which, which of the Christ uh, ate it, but he Jake, ate it. Jake. It, Jake. Yeah. Ed. Yeah, Ed Sheeran. Ed, Ed Sheeran, Sheeran. That's what I it. thought. Ed Sheeran ate all of fucking Riddle's knee. Well, Riddle hit that knee, and here's the thing. When you hit you a knee good... You didn't need a leg slap to assist that Nope. He, 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 shoot, he shot the fuck out of him with yeah. that knee, and it looked great. Riddle tapped out to Dave Christ, or Riddle taps out Dave Christ with... I believe it's a butterfly lock. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called or what he does. Sounds, sounds right to me. Whatever. Anyways, uh, and that was that. The Chosen Bros reign supreme here in PWG, as they should, because Jeff Cobb's phenomenal. I like the tag team between these guys, but I love Jeff Cobb. Yeah, no, Matt Jeff, Cobb, Riddle. Jeff Cobb's a fucking man. I, I like Matt Riddle a lot, but Jeff Cobb's a fucking man. 
Jeff Cobb is phenomenal. Yeah. And he should He's, be doing Jeff a Cobb lot more. Jeff Cobb might be my favorite guy like on the indies right now. On the indies. Yeah. The entire indie circuit. Yes. Well, he is phenomenal. That is true. Leo Rush versus Trevor Lee. Trevor attacked Mr. Rush before his introduction was even done. Leo bumped Lee on the outside. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, Leo Rush, 160 pounds. Yeah. I don't, I'm not buying it. There's no way he's that big. <laughs> you think they kayfabed it? Maybe. You heard it here, folks. Kayfabe, Leo Rush. Kayfabe in his own weight. Son of a bitch. He's I mean, a, he's got he's got a bit of muscle on him. Dude's so. got to be 5'2". Uh, yeah. He's got to be short because there's no way. He's 160 and he's all muscle. Let's take a look real quick. Leo Rush, 5'6". 161 pounds. So he is indeed a small yeah. fellow. He's two inches smaller than me, and I'm a short guy. Yep. Um, you were going to say something? No. Oh, I thought you were going to go for no. a comment about my fucking height and my club, the 5A club, uh, that me, Rich Swan, Billy K. Like the Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> Stop calling it that. No. <laughs> Leo, or Lee beats up on Leo for a bit on the inside. Then Trevor shows some color, shows some juice during this match. Starts bleeding at the mouth. Rick Knox is seen on camera actually counting out Leo Rush. <laughs> so doing his job for the first time in his life. Rush beats the shit out of Trevor in the which, corner. Which is odd because I don't remember any count during the uh, the Lee Cage and Callahan nope. match. Like, where, well, like, that's a triple first... threat match. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, 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 I, DQs, I pointed that no, out. no, 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 no count outs because of guys. We, we here at Falcon Arrow have taken quite a bit of a saltiness to yeah. people who don't count and yeah. do their jobs. Yeah, we, t- we take umbrage with, the, with referees <laughs> fail- failing to perform their duties. There is a list of gentlemen who yeah. suck at their job. Tiger, or Tiger, no, not Tiger Hattori. Tiger uh, Tori Marty awesome. Asami. Marty Asami and Red Shoes. Red Shoes. Number and we'll, one and two on the list. We'll be adding a third guy to this list later on. Rick Knox? <laughs> no. Justin Borden. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Hold on. The least over Hold guy on. in PWG is. Hold on. Put your gun down real fast. Rush beats the shit out of Trevor in the corner before Lee throws Rush into the turnbuckle harder than any human being has ever been thrown into a turnbuckle ever in the history of life. Kills Leo Rush to the point where a fan had to help him into the ring. Yeah. Lee repeatedly uppercutted Leo until Leo fires back with a couple quick slaps. Then Lee kicks Leo Rush square in the nuts, right in the ball sack. Trevor tries to win with a small package, but Leo reversed it and win with a pinfall. So he reversed the small package, the master of the small package, (laughs) as it were. So Leo Rush goes over on Trevor Lee, and Trevor could go fucking back to TNA. And it's nice to see that uh, the uh, distant Lee cousins were, (laughs) were were on the same show together. Finally reunited. Keith Keith uh, hasn't seen his long lost brother uh, Trevor in quite yeah, some yeah. time, as Excalibur pointed out. Yeah. Their families don't talk yeah. very much. No, he said they were long lost cousins. Long lost cousins. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the families do not speak very much, yeah. so that's why they're on uh, different terms at the moment, and probably why they have some different colored skin. Yeah. <laughs> Shane Strickland versus Desmond Ex- Xavier. So this was a pair of debuts in the Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Uh, the match started off with both men trying to do flippy shit. Didn't accomplish too much. They were. It seemed like they were. Uh, they got the ball rolling here very slowly. Yeah. Because the crowd wasn't really into it in the beginning of this. Then eventually, the action picked up. The pace got quicker. The flippy shit got better. The hits were harder. The kicks were stiffer. And both men did a lot better towards the end of this match. And in the very end, Shane Strickland got the victory over Mister Xavier, the the uh, professor of. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the 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 weird fucking mutant guys or yeah. whatever. I School for the gifted. <laughs> sure, whatever. Got the victory with I I can't even describe what this move was, and for the life of me, I don't know what it was. It was like it a, was like an electric chair, that, into like a wheelbarrow, like kind of I don't know, roll up fucking small package. Let slamming. me uh, I don't know. Let me refer Wikipedia, or let me ask the king King Wikipedia about this. Yeah. About his finisher, because I'll tell you one thing. I have no idea what yeah. to call this fucking move. He, like, lifted him up. Okay. It's called a JML driver, and it's described as an electric chair dropped into a half Nelson wheelbarrow driver. What? <laughs> I will wanna, say this again. You want to add any more moves in there? <laughs> electric chair dropped into a half Nelson, so kind of like a... um. Uh, who who does the fucking electric chair into the into the to the German? I think it's Kenny Omega, 
or somebody else. Maybe. I don't remember who uh, it was. But into a half Nelson wheelbarrow driver. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, um, it's exactly what it sounds yeah. like. It was ridiculous. But he snapped that shit off so fast, I thought he broke fucking Desmond's he neck. He looked... I felt concerned for Desmond with a Z. Yeah. Desmond Xavier's body and neck and back because he landed right on his fucking uh, spine yeah. as hard as you could possibly land a guy to the point where the crowd looked at this man and thought, we have just witnessed a murder. Yep. However, Shane... Did not murder this man, thankfully, and hopefully doesn't need any surgery in another 20 years. But Shane Strickland wins his first match here in PWG, and both these men, it started off badly and did just fine. Tag team matchup, Zach's, a tag team grudge match. Yes. Zack Sabre Jr. and Marty Skrull, the leaders of the new school. I feel like that's setting up the feud for the top of the card for the next show. So, Well, the next show has Marty and Chuck in the yeah. main event. Yeah. Game over, man, so... Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't have truck. Uh, truck. Truck. <laughs> truck Taylor. Yes. <laughs> doesn't have Trent and Zach in the. As, yeah. I have no idea. I don't, I didn't look at the card, but um, yeah, this was a grudge match that led that was created because the last event that we saw was the main event between Chuck Taylor and Mister Zach Saber Jr. for the world title, and Marty Skrull came out and basically made Zach a heel. Yes. So they became. They are now the new heel stable here in PWG, and I suppose the top guys at the moment. Yep. They're they're the new Mount Rushmore of they are the 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 oh, UK dude. Rushmore. Yeah. So Skrull tried to cut a shitty promo in the beginning. I don't give a fuck because yours truly does not give a shit about Marty Skrull. Yeah. I do not care, and yeah. not in a gee this guy's a heel and I don't like him type of way. No, yeah. I really don't care. He's like about the Marty one Skrull. super over indie guy that I just can't get on board. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I don't, about I, don't Marty hate, I don't hate him as much as you do, but I just I don't I don't get it. I don't see it. I don't Marty is all right. He puts on great yeah. matches. I'm he's, not he's gonna not sit bad... here and attack his work. Yeah he's not, not a bad I'm wrestler. Doing. I just don't feel like I'm not enthused I'm not enthusiastic about seeing a Marty Scrum match. Well I could bring up one way that you can't be enthused. I don't know because he has a spot where he breaks guys fingers and no one sells it. Yeah. Ever ever yeah, in the yeah, history no, of life. No one has a cast. No <laughs> one ever tries to sell form. a broken finger. Yeah. For anyone out there listening to this, have you ever had a broken finger? You can't do anything. Not even masturbate. Which is something that we need here in life. So Skrull tr tried to cut a shitty promo, and like I said, I didn't give a fuck. Chuck and Trent start wailing on the Brits, as I wrote down, because I'm a fucking racist. Zack Sabre Jr. grabs some dude's hat, throws it across the room like a legit heel. Uh, <laughs> I wrote Chuck, but I wrote Cuck, so I'm just going to say <laughs> Cuck and Trent. Cuck Taylor. <laughs> Cuck Taylor. Beat up on the leaders. They hug it out in the middle. The crowd rejoices. Chuck and Marty fight on the outside. Sabre puts Trent in a very painful submission. The order is restored, and Trent gets the heat on Marty. Trent tags in Chuck, but Justin doesn't see it because all of a sudden, there are rules being enforced here in PWG. Justin Borden's officiating was horrendous yes. during this matchup. Absolutely. I, I don't ever recall a PWG referee trying to stop just a random come in from, a, from the tag team, from the non-tag team. Justin party. Borden was so against Chuck Taylor yeah. getting in this match in any form of fashion. Dude, he was totally... He's totally in the pocket. Totally of Totally in the pocket of the leaders of the new school. So yeah. Marty Skrull paying off Justin Borden. You heard it here for first. Uh, Zach out, outs Trent in a knee bar. Oh, he has Trent in the knee bar. And Trent clearly has his hand on the ropes. All right, this was the spot that really pissed me off. So he's got him in a knee bar. Trent is grabbing the ropes almost immediately after Zach puts him in it. Justin looks at this, he notices this, and he start, he he goes to start a count, a five count, as it were. But um, he notices Chuck just sliding over to the other side of the ring to get a good look at the submission and goes, Hey, you can't be that close or over here. I'm going to stop counting this. <laughs> These guys are legal, but I've got an issue with this guy on the apron. So that shit really bothered me. Yep. Now, mind you, this is PWG, but... Once again, officiating does, has not gotten a good rap this yeah. year. So Marty and Zach beat up on Trent. They pose. Yeah, which Justin Borden, totally okay with Marty and Zach in the ring beating him up. Oh, not, yeah, that's correct. Not, not even counting him at all, but God forbid when Chuck tries to get, <laughs> tries to get in the ring. Marty and Zach did double moves after double moves after, after double moves on fucking Trent. Justin just kind of went... Uh, Chuck, you better not get in that this fucking ring. I'll take care of this right now. So, Marty and Zach beat up on Trent. They pose. They beat up again on Trent. They pose again. 
Chuck gets the hot tag, drop kicks Marty, runs wild on both men, then chops the living fuck out of both of them. Chuck hits the Chuck bottom on Marty. <laughs> Marty throws a chair at Chuck before he bumps once again. Justin being paid off because he doesn't call this a DQ. Yeah. So the shoddy officiating at it once again. Marty locks in a chicken wing on Chuck. Zach pops a Nagata on Chuck. <laughs> Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Marty locked in the chicken wing on Trent. And Zach popped a Nagata on Chuck. I it wrote Chuck twice. It wasn't. For, for some reason, I like writing Chuck down. Yeah. It wasn't really a Nagata. It was more, it was closer to a Rings of Saturn. Nagata's just the one arm. He had the one arm. But he also had the other arm locked in the, with the leg. That's not, that's not Nagata's oh, finish. I, I could have swore yeah. he was just, he had, no. he had his hand. No, he had the other arm locked. All right. Uh, Chuck takes a PK, knee, and then another PK, still kicks out. So uh, Chuck Taylor looking very strong here during this event. Marty breaks Mr. Taylor's fingers. And at least, at least, he sold it. Yeah. He sold it. He was hurting bad on the in the finger area, and both men make their way to the back to start fighting it out. They duked it out behind the curtain while Saber and Trent were still in the ring. Then Trent pinned Zach Saber Jr. after a gotch style pile driver, middle of the yes. ring. Conveniently, as we were talking about Minoru Literally Suzuki's two theme, seconds before we were talking about Minoru Suzuki, we were discussing uh -huh, yeah. Minoru Suzuki's theme. And all of a sudden here that we witness a gotch style uh, pile driver right in the middle of the ring. So you heard it here. It's almost like subconsciously we knew it was coming. <laughs> Minoru Suzuki confirmed for PWG in yes. the near future. Afterwards, Marty ran in, low blowed both of them, and cut a promo about how uh, he's going to beat the... He would like a match with Mr. Chuck Taylor at the next event. And Chuck goes, well, only, only if it's a Reseda street fight, which I'm almost certain is a gorilla... Warfare match. Pretty much, I'm sure, yeah. They should have just made it a guerrilla warfare Reseda street fight, guerrilla style street fight, no holds uh, barred. No disqualifications. No disqualifications, no holds barred. Remember that one uh, WWE uh, fucking... No holds barred street fight? It was they, they, when they had the pole and it was it was a street it was whatever a Memphis street fight or whatever no disqualification three of the same match yeah it was yeah, the same same match, exact yeah. fucking yeah. match three times over that's what this was it's like it's a Rashida street fighting Excalibur goes we haven't seen a Rashida street fight in quite some time <laughs> uh yeah maybe they act, or maybe they'll actually fight in the streets maybe they will maybe they will That'd as opposed awesome. to a street fight which doesn't get fought in the streets ever yeah. the final match on this card was the Bucks of Youth versus Phoenix. And Pentagon. You mean Penta L0M and Ray Phoenix? Versus Matt Seidel <laughs> and the everyone's favorite Irish wrestler, Rick O'Shea, in a three way dance for the Ch PWG Tag Team Championships. I will be completely honest, I didn't write a goddamn thing down for this no. match. Way too much shit yeah, going on. You already know this match was going to be too fast, uh, really. Let me summarize it for everybody out there. There were flips, yeah. there were kicks. At one point... Uh, Flipping kicks, I'm sure. <laughs> at one point, Pentagon and Phoenix discovered some Young Bucks garb. Yes. They put it on. The Young Bucks put on some masks. There was a reversal of roles during this matchup. Yes. So, Ray and Mr. Pentagon were telling them you to suck Pentagon it. Zero Shut up. We're telling them to suck it. The Young Bucks were telling them zero miedo. And this went on for a while. Quite a bit. Yeah. Until Matt Seidel... Or guys who looked like Matt Seidel and Ricochet got in the ring with yes. masks on. Yeah, they kept appearing garb. and disappearing for like a few <laughs> minutes there. <laughs> so so Ricochet kept popping in and out of this match. Uh, some dude kept replacing him with a mask on. I was very confused. Very confused. There were bumps on the outside. There were flips. Like I said, very difficult to write anything down about this match. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Mr. Penta gone. <laughs> and Fee... Nix won this match with a uh, what the fuck did Phoenix do? I think he did like a reverse. Uh, God, I totally forgot what the fuck he did. They kicked they kicked the young bucks in the face a thousand times. Yeah, they did it was a, super a million kick. super kicks. They did it like a super kick death party at one point. There was a thousand and one super kicks during this matchup, and Phoenix pinned. I believe it was. Did they pin? Yeah, they pinned Ricochet or Matt Seidel. They pinned Ricochet during this matchup. They did not pin the young bucks. So yes, they were. They were nowhere to be found. Young I'm Bucks sure were... at the, la the last 10 minutes of this matchup, the Young Bucks were nowhere to be found. Yeah. They died on the outside of the ring and could not be heard from. So your new PWG Tag Team Champions, Penta L0 Agon Jr., the fifth, <laughs> and Joseph Ray Romano Phoenix. Everybody loves Ray Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> they are your new Tag Team Champions. The Young Bucks finally lose the belts. And that was PWG 
Uh, young boys don't play rock and roll, but nice boys don't play young. Yeah. <laughs> young boys, <laughs> young young lions don't yeah. play rock and roll. We're too busy like talking, like, watching Japan shit, watching talking Japan about young and boys. fucking beat up line by Yuji Nagata yeah. on the undercard. Well, that was PWG, and I guess the next PWG event we have to look forward to is Game Over, man. Yeah, right. Yeah, that'll probably so be the last one. show rolling before Bola. They should. Uh, I hope is they there would... one on the way? Or oh, this one was on the way. It was the one that was technically on the way and that we talked about last yeah, this, time. This is the one that's on the way. Yeah. Okay, so we're Game Over Man is the next that's one. Funny. I just ordered it the other day. So we have that to look forward to, and the next time, I suppose me and Anthony will join you guys for another episode of J and A, right? <laughs> Not J and C. Yeah. He does not like his last name being used. I was just curious as to why. It will still be marketed as J and C, but he's not going to know about it because he doesn't read any of that stuff. But the next time we'll join you guys, I suppose, is for any New Japan stuff. I don't think Dominion's in June. Well, probably as as the uh, Battle of the Super Juniors starts rolling through. Oh, that's right. That's coming up soon. That is correct. We do have the Battle of the Super Juniors to look forward to, and I suppose the next time we'll talk to everybody will be for that. Uh, we have Ring of Honor coming up in a couple days. We will be there to attend to watch our favorite Japanese wrestlers go at it with some some weird fucking American guys. And uh, that's it, everybody. We're all out of time. And is there anything else you'd want to get out of the way, Anthony? Uh, no, I think that's it. That's it. And we will join you all once again for another edition of WWE Weekly. And we'll vomit all over the microphone once again. Take care, everybody.